good morning. Here we are, another Wednesday. Can you believe next week of February? This, this week is flying, uh, year actually is flying by. And I just praise God that he continues to keep us and protect us in spite of everything that's going on in this world. Can you just bow your heads for a moment, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, many people didn't make it today, but you chose to wake us up. You chose to make sure we were faced. You, make, you show, chose to make sure that we were safe. And Lord, we pray right now for peace in our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, and even in the environment that we live in right now. We pray that our leaders are touched and strengthened. We pray that even the instructors of the school, the students, uh, the workers, and everybody associated with Canyonville Academy, that they will be strengthened and their hearts will be lifted right now as we uh, navigate through difficult, difficult times. But Lord, we look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith. We look to you, uh, the source of our joy, the source of our peace, the source of our strength. And we praise you to go forth right now in faith, praising you for your mighty call in each and every life that's in this room, and even every life that's in this world. We pray that the word, the word today will fall on the fertile grounds of the humble hearts that are present today. Touch them, keep them, encourage them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this um, past Sunday, um, we talked about the power of love. And actually, it's one of my absolute favorite subjects. Uh, because there, there's strength in it. People look, at, look to weapons, they look to uh, laws, they look to various things of the power, but there's power, power in the love that God has for us, and power, that same love God is putting you is the power that's going to change this world. People are looking for the answers, and the answers are not, uh, the answers are not in the law, uh, the answers are not in self-help books, but the answers uh, to the problems that are going on in this world right now are God. We st uh, spoke of the, the, the primary needs that we all as human beings and God's creations have. We have physiological needs. We need to be uh, fed and have water and sleep and, um, and things that sustain us physically. We need to know that we are safe, that we don't have to worry about where we are, uh, whether something is going to attack us in day or night. We spoke about esteem, how confident you feel in yourself and the confidence we get from knowing who we are. We also spoke about self-accusation, basically understanding what your talents and your gifts are, what God has uniquely prepared you to do. But more significantly, we spoke about love, how we all need to feel love, how we all need to feel a sense of belonging, how we all need to feel uh, there's something in us. And there are various levels of partnership that goes with that love. There's a love between husbands and wives. There's a love between a uh, relationship with women and a, a love in terms of associ associations that men have. But then there's a, a love that comes only from God. And that's what that power is. Now, the, the power, we, uh, the love, the level of love that we're going to speak about today is called agape love. That is the foundation of all of the love, um, other loves that the uh, Bible and uh, different, um, and I'm not giving psychologists credit, but I'm giving God credit. But all the love, all the other loves are foundationally built on agape love. Um, let me just give you a, a slight definition. Agape is one of the four Greek words used in the Bible. This is the highest form of love, the one that all is always used for God. It's self-sacrificing. It's unconditional love. It's a love, it's not a feeling, but it is an action. Basically, that's the love that we show. That's the love that we put into action. It says faith without works is dead, but also faith without love. So in going forward, we need to understand that there's power in it. Yes. We know the fuzzy feelings we get when we uh, know somebody loves us and we accept it and things of that nature. But God is calling uh, us far beyond the feeling. If you depend on your feelings, 
I don't know about you, but my feelings go up and down. I have good days, bad days, and days uh, uh, that are not so good. So if I react it based on my feelings, I'll be making mistakes all the time. Uh, January 18th was Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. And one of the messages that he spoke about was directly related to agape love. And this is just a brief statement from uh, a paper he wrote back in 1967 when I was a little, little boy in second grade. But uh, it's interesting how poignant this message is, uh, is even now. So God, agape love is understanding. It's a create, creative. It is redemptive towards all men. It's an overflowing love that seeks nothing in return. It looks for the good in all men. And it's not that we're trying to appeal to anybody. And Dr. King went on to uh, say he's going to love his enemies in spite of them. He's going to love his enemies if they bomb his house. He's going to love his enemies if they exploit him. He's going to love his enemies even if they sought to kill him. He is going to love his enemies. And I'm not saying that it's easy because uh, there are some times that uh, we may not be lovable. Nobody is around. You all lovable. You all precious. But there are some times that I may not be lovable. I may not be the easiest person to be around. But God called us to love each other even when we are unlovable. And it ain't easy sometimes. But when we go forth and we understand how much God loves us in spite of, how much God loves us no matter what we do, then we'll walk. We'll walk and this world will be changed. Uh, we just, we've had recent events, people trying to um, look to political parties, looking to various individuals to bring peace, they're looking to the president, they're looking to various governments to bring peace, and uh, the men and the vice of this, uh, in this nation right now. And I'm telling you right now, uh, there's no man on earth that in his political power is going to mend, it's going to draw us closer. But it's the love of God that's going to bring us together. It's the love of God that is going to change this world. And the interesting thing about agape love, it does not care where you came from. It does not care that we're different. It does not care uh, economic or social status. It does not care about any of these things. But it's something that if we put into action, if we put into action, it will uh, bridge and uh, deal with a lot of the issues that we're facing right now. In Matthew 22nd chapter, uh, starting with verse 36, the disciples were talking to Jesus, and Jesus, and asked Jesus, they said, Teacher, what is the most com um, important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. But this, this is the first and greatest commandment. But the second one is equally as important. It says, Love your neighbors as yourself. And it says, the entire law is built, or the prophets are built on those two commandments, loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. In 1 uh, John 4, 19, it says, we love each other uh, because God first loved us. Um, John 15, chapter 15, verse, it says, I long, no longer call you servants because a servant does not, does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends, because everything I've learned, I've made known to you. Verse 13 of that same chapter says, there's no greater love than that you laid down your life for a friend. We can change this world. There's enough power in this room to change this world. Um, one of the major ways that Jesus showed love was that he healed the sick. He helped to sick people that were physically sick and mentally sick. How did he do that? And he, he gave a parable. Let me, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, he gave a parable um, in Luke. He spoke of the parable of the Good Samaritan. In fact, let me read, uh, read from it directly. It says, Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him and took all his clothes, beat him, and left him half dead on the side of the road. 
But by chance, a priest came along, and when he saw the man laying there, he crossed to the other side of the road. That is a serious indictment. That's like me seeing one of you all hurt on the side of the road, and I crossed on the other side of the road uh, to, so I wouldn't have to be involved. And that's, that, that's sadly, there are people in leadership that would see somebody injured on the side of the road and would keep going because they don't want to be involved. Uh, it says next, um, it says a man from the temple, a temple assistant, walked across over and looked at him lying in the road, and he kept going. Somebody that worked in the temple, somebody that worked in the church, walked by and saw this man laying on the side of the road, and he kept going. But then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine, bandaged them. Then he put this man on his donkey, took him to the inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins and said, take care of this man. If the bill runs higher, I'll take care of it, whatever is over. The stranger, the one that there was a racial issue because there was a racial divide between the Samaritans and the Jews, the one that should not, because of the institutions at that time, had anything to do with this man, was the one that rendered care. And Jesus said, you go forth and do the same. It don't matter if, sadly, this community does not communicate with this community. It doesn't matter. God said, love them anyway. God said, if, he, and let me tell you something. He's going to put opportunities in front of you. He's going to put strangers in front of you. He's going to put people in front of you that you otherwise would not have any business dealing with. And that's an open door for you to show the love of God. I'm not saying it's easy sometimes, but if you want to change the world, that's how the world is going to be changed. Notice everybody now in this atmosphere is full of sitting off in their corners. This, this group, this group, this group, this group. And that is not what the Bible speaks of. That's not what the Bible has called us to do. God has called us to bridge those gaps that separate us and unify this world. I'm not saying it'll be easy because, like I said, it's not based on the feelings. It's based on what you know you need to do. In John 5th chapter, starting with verse 1, it says Jesus heals a lame, a man who was lame. It says Jesus returned to Jerusalem for the Jewish holidays. Inside the city, uh, near the sheep gate, was a pool called Bethesda, which had five uh, couple of porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, lay on these porches. Uh, one of the men there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, he knew he had been there for a long time. He came up to the man and asked him, what would you like me to do? He said, Jesus, he said, I can't, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. He said, would you like to get well? And he said, I can't, because he was looking to the pool. He said, every time uh, uh, the opportunity came and the pool bubbled, um, people would push me out of the way. People were insensitive. They would push me down. And even though it was my turn in line to get it, uh, to get into the pool, people would jump in front of me. So all these years, I saw healing, 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 and nobody even gave me a second thought. And here we are, Jesus. And Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And instantly, that man was healed. And he rolled up his mat and went walking again because of the miracle. There are going to be opportunities. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is not going to make sense. It is not going to make sense the people that God is trying to put in your path. It's not going to make sense the places that you're going to find yourself. I remember years ago I was um, driving from Daytona. I think I was in college then. I was driving from Daytona to some little town called Lavo, uh, North Florida. And uh, my car, I had an old rickety car that had nearly a million miles Actually, I had over 900,000 miles on this car. And this car broke down on the side of the road. I'm in the dark, and I'm, I had made it all, almost back to um, Daytona. I was in St. Augustine. And the car broke down. I'm on the dark side of the road. The car just whizzing by. And I'm telling you, I'm not one to hit check for riding. I'm standing on the side of the road trying to hit check for riding. And this guy uh, who worked in the oil wells came by. Out of all the people, I mean, I stood there for the longest trying to hitch a ride. And this man gave me a ride. And he gave me a ride all the way, all the way back to the college, all the way back to my dorm and made sure I got him safe. This man didn't know me from anybody. But that was agape love and action. Because 
he picked up a string. I could have been dangerous this man. This man could have been dangerous to me, but because of something that was in his heart, he gave me a ride back. But you know what's interesting also? If we look to God just for physical healing, but God wants to heal our mind. Many of us are wounded. Many of us are hurt. Many of us have uh, things that, uh, that are far beyond our ability to endure. But Jesus wants to heal you mentally. And there are times when Jesus had to lay hands and heal people's minds and hearts. Um, in Psalms 34, chapter 17, it says, The Lord hears his people when he calls for help. People are praying right now, wondering, does God hear me? And God is saying today, he hears me. And he rescues them from all of their troubles. He's not talking about little troubles only. He's talking about trouble, things that are troubling your heart, things that are robbing you of your sleep. He hears you, and he wants to free you from all of those troubles. He says the Lord is close to the broken heart, and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. We've been crushed so many, by, so many times by so many circumstances. And say the, right, the righteous person faces many trouble, but the Lord comes and rescues them each time. God is saying today, do not stop praying because he hears you and he is going to rescue you. And he said he will protect you, but not a single bone in your body will be broken. In Philippians 4, chapter, starting with the sixth verse, it said, don't worry about anything. Stop stressing. Stop being anxious. It said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Even the most insignificant thing, um, my rice cooker burned out. That's important to God if it's robbing you of your sleep and your time. I can't find my shoes. That's important to God. I, I don't have any clean clothes. You think those things are insignificant, but if it's stealing you of your joy and your peace, it is important to God. And God said, pray to him about everything. He said, then you will experience the peace which exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ. Let me tell you, I was talking about um, I was not being anxious, because I'm going to tell you many times I went to get dressed and I couldn't find a shirt that matched. I'm going through the closet, closet, and I'm getting anxious because I know I watched this, I know I hung this up, I know I ironed it, and I'm getting stressed. And it's like, Lord, shut this bag up for a minute. And I go back in the closet, and there it is, right there. But in my anxiety, I let that potentially ruin my day. It may seem small or insignificant. But God is even concerned about that. And he wants you to have peace in that. Because I don't know about you, I don't want to start my day off stressed. I don't want to start my day off anxious. I don't want to start my day worried about things that people perceive as insignificant. But if it's stealing your joy and it's stealing your peace and it's stealing your place in seeking God, it is important. Jesus showed love in that he dealt with the dead. He raised the dead. Um, his best friend Lazarus. And people sent word to Jesus said, your, your friend Lazarus is sick. And by the time Jesus got there, he was dead. And the people said, Girl, there's no need for you to come. He's already dead. But it says Jesus wept. Jesus was wounded over the wounds that, they, uh, that the other people were, uh, were feeling. And he, and the human and emotional side of him wept. But then the faith kicked in. And it says, roll the stone away. And he told Lazarus to come home. He loved his friend. And he brought his friend back to life. As in John 11, chapter, uh, verse 38. Jesus fed the hungry in love. Jesus um, preached to 4,000. And he preached to 5,000. And Jesus called his disciples. He said, I have compassion on these people. These people have been following me for days. And they have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry because they would die on the way. They would collapse on the way hunger. But because he loved them, he found a little boy in the audience that had some fishes and loaves. And he says, because of his love and his compassion, he, felt, he fed them. Why? Because he wanted to show his love. But also he wanted them to continue to be fed with spiritual food as well as literal food. food. He fed these people in love. Jesus preached love to the kingdom. Um, and 1 Corinthians 13, the love, we call that the love chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have not loved, I'm nothing. Um, and he just goes on and he's talking about significance of love. He says, of all these things, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. When we learn to walk in that, 
He wants you to understand that he loves you. And once you understand how loved you are. See, that, I'm going to tell you, that's a big problem. I'm going to tell you, I, I know y'all don't have this problem. But the problem I had many times was I hated myself. I looked at myself, I looked in the mirror, and I hated what I saw. And what I felt in my heart for myself came out to other people and got to the point. Uh, I had this one person tell me, God, I was feeling good until you showed up. And now I'm gonna, you know, I want to do something crazy because of what I was projecting. But when I learned that I was loved, and I projected what was in my heart, it changed the whole atmosphere around me. He said, if you lift God up, he'll draw people to you. There are individuals in this room that people are drawn to because of the love that you project. There's an unspoken, there's an unspoken thing that we speak out. There's a language that we speak out. There's a spirit that we give out where people are drawn to us. Or people can be repelled from us because of what's in us. I'm telling you right now, there's anybody in this room that has problems with yourself. The person you see in the mirror in the morning, you need to get that fixed every day. Matter of fact, let's, let's pray about that. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would touch the hearts of these precious ones in this room and those that are within the sound of my voice. Lord, help them to love themselves. Help them to see how unique you've made them. Help them to see how precious they are in your sight. Help them to see that they're all equally loved and equally accepted in your sight. Fill their hearts, Lord, with the love, your precious love today. Touch them. Touch them like never before. We proclaim this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are loved and you need to walk in that. Jesus also, he cast out demons. There were individuals that were uh, demon-possessed. And I'm not going to get into the spooky part of that, but there are individuals that have spirits in them that are not of God. And Jesus healed them that they were free. Um, there were several people um, that came to Jesus. As a matter of fact, there was only one instance where the disciples um, came to Jesus and said, we prayed, we did everything we could, but we could not heal this one. And remember I talked about faith and love earlier. And he said, don't you know this kind does not lead without much fasting and prayer. You see, we love ourselves and we love God there are going to be times that we have to go before God for strength because we're going to need the strength and the faith to deal with a lot of things that we're dealing with today. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's possible if we go forth in love. There's power in love. People think uh, power comes from strength and living ways. And yeah, I'm, man, there's a significance to that. Get run, get your bodies healthy, eat the right foods and things of that nature, but also you need to take care of your spiritual health. Jesus also prayed for his, his disciples and the people that were workers in the church. He prayed for his deacons. He prayed for the uh, workers and the ushers and the people that were going out serving in church. Because sometimes, I'm going to tell you, sometimes it's not easy. There are some times that we have to go out and implement water. There are some times that we go out when we're sick and don't feel good. There are some times that we just don't feel it. And there are some times that we get shaken by persecution and attacks that we feel. But when God's love goes forth, we go forth and lives are changed. Um, in John 17, chapter 20, verse, he says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe through the message that they, they all will be one, my Father. Also, he prayed, he demonstrated his love and when he gave his life for us. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And, and people many times don't understand the significance of that. God so loved the world. He so loved you. He says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet separated from God, he died for us that we would be in right standing with him. The next verse, it says, God did not come in the world to condemn the world, but through him that he that we may be saved. People think, oh, God, God came to the world. Uh, I'm going to hell and things of that nature. No, he loves you. He loves you. He's available to you today. In Ephesians 3rd chapter, 16th verse, it says, I pray that from his glorious 
and limited resources. He will empower you to enter, enter strength through his spirit. See, God wants the Holy Spirit to do something to your hearts today. Then the spirit will make room in your hearts as you trust in God. It says your roots will grow deep uh, into God's love and keep you strong. And you will have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. And may you experience the love of Christ that is too great to, um, for us even to understand how, how full and how great, great God's love is. And you will be complete. And when we understand how unlimited, how immeasurable God's love is, then it will change the way that we treat this world. But we, you might say, well, I still don't understand this agape love. I still don't understand this. How can I, how can I, in my physical limitations, show love to this world? Let me make it very, very simple for today. One, one way that we can show love is just sit down and listen. People, many times, will come to you with their problems will come to you with stress and anxiety. And we may not have the answer to those problems, but many times in just sitting down, closing our mouths, and listening, and letting people get that stress off of them, that is showing a God they love. Um, those that have or have not been to therapists before, you're gonna find that many times therapists, they do very, very little talking. They let you talk. And I'm gonna tell you why that is significant. So, because sometimes, many times, we have so much stuff on us, and we are in our loneliness, in our iso we isolate ourselves. Because I'm, I'm notorious for that. Uh, when I'm feeling certain way, I isolate myself. I want to be around anybody. When we learn that love fights that loneliness, and what, what happens many times, we have so much stuff built up, and we don't talk to anybody, and we got more stress built up, we got more anger built up, to this point that we are defeating ourselves and we're hurting ourselves. But when God directs you to somebody, just to let that stuff out, let that stuff out. And if God has gifted you to listen, sit down and listen to that person. You may not have an answer, but you may be the vehicle for that individual to listen. But remember we said also, God wants to heal your heart. Pray about everything, everything. Pray about everything. How, how else, how, what's another way that I can show this agape love that you keep talking about? Respect our differences. Everybody in this room looks different. There are a number of nations represented, represented in this room. Uh, the church I come from, I think right now there's between 14 and 20 different nations in the church that I come from. I don't speak all those languages. I don't understand all the languages. There's a few words that I can understand. But it's interesting when we greet them at a the door with a handshake, with a hug, with a smile. Accept those differences and respect those differences. People want to change people to look like them and things of that nature. No, let people be them. And it's a wonderful thing about when you accept those differences. That is love that we can at our level show. As people's opinion, that sometimes I don't have the answer. But the experts in this room, and you believe not, some of you are experts in various areas that you don't even realize. And um, I may show you love by coming to you and say, you know what, can you help me with this? Can you show me a better way to do this? That, that is a way that we can show and demonstrate love. Uh, be honest if there's a problem with it. Now, and this is a tricky one. If someone comes and asks your opinion or help with a problem, be gentle in your answer. Let me, let me give you an example. Uh, how does my hair look today? The, the bad reply would be, girl, I wouldn't, uh, go, out, I wouldn't go out looking like that. If, uh, if. <laughs> That's not the best way to respond in love. But in love, you can say, you know, why don't you try this? Why don't you use my hair straight? Why don't you use my gel? Why don't you use my comb? Why don't you those are simple ways that we can see. We make it so unreachable in terms of showing love to people. It can, we can make it so simple. Pray for people. Lay hands and pray, reach out and pray for people for their spiritual growth. Some time ago, we talked about prayer. Let me tell you, 
A tricky thing about prayer, when you start praying for people, you develop a spiritual attachment to that person and you grow to love that person when you pray for them. That's why God encourages us to pray for them. I don't know about you, can you effectively pray for somebody you hate? Can you effectively pray for somebody you can't stand? But the more you pray for them, the more and more you will care about them. And the more and more that love that God wants to show will come out. Don't make assumptions. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. Don't make assumptions. If I see you walking around uh, not smiling, oh God, what did I do? Oh, they looking at me. Are you looking at me like that? You want to do something? Don't make assumptions. That person may have had a bad morning. That person may have had a bad day. I used to work with this lady, and I thought she hated my guts. I thought she uh, couldn't stand the ground that I walked on. And I got to talking to this lady and found out, found out that she had a child that died. She had problems in her relationship. She had, she had this mountain of problems going on. That's why she came in every morning just so full of stuff. And she couldn't trust anybody enough to tell them, I'm hurting, I'm suffering. So she'd come in with a scowl on her face every day and was unapproachable. So when God opened the door for me to reach out to this lady, and I was younger and I didn't know, necessarily know what I was doing. I even didn't even know the significance of what I was doing in terms of listening to this woman. It showed that woman love. Be humble and teachable. We don't know everything. And your instructors and people of God is put in your path to show you love through equipping you with knowledge. You're gonna some the seniors, seniors, you leave and soon. You're gonna graduate, you're gonna go to college, you're gonna go into your businesses, you're gonna go into your professions, and you may think you know everything. I gave the illustration the other day of this young man that said, when I was a little boy, I thought my dad was the strongest genius in the world. But when I came, became a teenager, I thought he was an idiot. But when I got out into the world and saw what the world had for me, and remembered the stories my father told me, and remembered how my father tried to teach me, I realized that my father was a genius. Get the knowledge that these teachers and these people in leadership are preparing you for now. Get that knowledge. It will benefit you somewhere down the road. You may not even see an application for it now. But down the road, it will benefit you. Another way we can show that love is to forgive people even when reconciliation is not possible. When I say forgive, when reconciliation, there may not be an opportunity to make up. I've had, to, I've had to forgive people from a distance. And the likelihood of me seeing that person face to face again was zero. But I had to forgive them from a distance and show them love from a distance. The centurion soldier um, came to Jesus and said, uh, my servant, my humble servant is sick. Can you come and lay hands on him? Uh, can you Come lay hands on him that he may be healed. And then the centurion soldier came to his reality. He said, wait a minute, this is Lord of Lord, kings of kings. He said, Jesus, pray from where you are, and I'm convinced that my servant will be healed. And Jesus prayed from where he was, and that servant will be healed. There's a prayer from where you are. You can touch the world from where you are. You can pray for people back home from where you are. And with that faith, healing and reconciliation will be possible. And then, trust me, it don't make sense to forgive somebody that's murdered. It doesn't make sense to forgive somebody that's stolen from you. It doesn't make sense uh, to forgive somebody that insulted you. It don't, don't make sense in your natural mind. But in your spiritual mind, we understand that God loved us and forgave us for our unforgivable sins. And God forgave us for the things that we messed up on. And we, he forgave us. So he says, if he loves us and forgives us, we need to forgive each other. It ain't, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying through the Holy Spirit that it's possible. We need to continue to love each other. And even in times that you have to tell somebody, in times that you have to tell somebody that they're wrong. And I'm going to tell you, that's a hard, hard thing to tell somebody, uh, somebody that they're wrong. But the thing is, I'd much rather you tell me that I'm wrong now. I'd much rather you look to me right now and say, you know what, you're speaking wrong, you're acting wrong, you're doing, and I may get upset with you for a moment, but I'm gonna tell you I'm alive today because I was corrected, even though I didn't seemingly accept that correction. I found that when I walked in, that this individual actually loved me enough 
to jump in my stuff, as we used to say, get on my page and tell me that I'm doing things wrong. And those things, those very things, saved my life in so many different instances. God is saying right now, the world is going to be changed through you. It's not going to be changed through the laws. They're signing laws, executive orders into book, uh, into all, into uh, practice every day. Laws have been made everywhere. But it is the love, it's the power of the love that's going to come from you that's going to change this world. In Hebrews 13th chapter, verses 1 and 2. It says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For, uh, don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. By doing this, many times that we, we have entertained angels without knowing. There are angels walking on this earth, and we may not even know. There was a friend of mine one day, he um, met a hungry, this guy that was homely, homeless and hungry. He was hanging around a duck and donut um, in the Kissimmee area of Florida. And he bought this man food and gave him money. And I mean, it was just an instant he um, gave this man something. And he turned around seconds later to speak to this man. There was no way, there was no way that this person could have gotten away from him. There was a line of sight completely around him. And he turned around and said, man, do you need anything else? This man was gone in that instant. It's very likely that there could have been an angel that God sent. Once again, I'm going to read this again. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality. From hospitality, we have the people a place to sleep, eat, comfort, and things of that nature. For by doing so, we have unknowingly entertained angels without knowing. So you don't know who you're dealing with. You, we look at people, how they dress, how they speak, how they smell, and how they look, and we make judgments. Don't miss opportunities of love. That's what's going to heal this world. That's what's going to change this world. And that's what's going to transform this world for them. Let's bow our heads one more time, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of your love. You said while we were yet sinners, you died for us. You suffered and died on the cross. You said, for God so loved the world that you sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross, that we may have life. And we thank you for that love today. We thank you for the privilege that you've called us to love this world. We thank you for the, the privilege that you've called us to be vehicles and instruments that is going to bridge the racial and cultural divides that are prevalent in this world right now. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being used for your purpose, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we have the knowledge and the ability and the willingness to walk in the power of your love. And we thank you for that and we praise you for that right now in Jesus' name. Amen.